G'day guys, it's Jeff Ware here. Sunday morning. Surprise, surprise, I'm out testing in the rain. It's summer here in Australia, but we've been getting a lot of rain lately. Um, thus, I'm riding on a Sunday, I normally wouldn't. But uh, with so many bikes to test and bad weather, I've been trying to ride when I can. And uh, kind of lucked out again this morning, but look, I don't mind. I have had a good run on this thing in the dry. I've just come out of the uh, out of the state forest here, and I mean, fantastic. Uh, I love this bike. What can I say? Simple equals fun. And I have to say, out of all the motorcycles I've tested this year, which is a lot, uh, you know, probably 30, 40 bikes, um, I think this is the most fun I've had and this is the bike I would be more than happy to keep and just keep riding a bit longer and it's because it's just so basic the old KLR hasn't really changed a lot since 1986 it's now fuel injected with a few changes you know which you can read about here in the link above so fuel injection uh, Euro 5 brake upgrades, styling upgrades, and a few other bits and pieces. It's made it a really cool bike and lots of refinement, obviously, over the years. Now, this is your budget, basic, big, giant trail bike. That's pretty much what it is. It's better on the road than it is off-road, but it's really, really good off-road. I mean, this is the kind of bike you ride around Australia. It's got soft suspension, a huge, and I mean huge, soft, comfortable seat, very comfortable riding position rubber mounted foot pegs now which some people like some people don't I like them uh, a screen and now with the new fairing amazing weather and wind protection um, and that's all it is but it's got everything you need it handles really really good on the road um, you would not believe that uh, but it does anything below about 10 k's an hour is a little bit difficult you need clutch, you need good balance. It kind of gets a bit top heavy and wobbly in traffic below 10 k's an hour. Above 10 k's an hour and from there on in, even with the big front wheel uh, and the skinny tires, it just, it handles really well. Amazingly, amazingly, even on the tires it comes, comes with on the Dunlops, I can pump this thing pretty hard through the twisties, I tell you. And one of the reason is, is that it's got a fair whack of ground clearance and you can hit the bumps really hard. You don't have to worry about bumps at all. So th my local road's called the old road and I, I can really go through the fast, bumpy parts pretty pretty well on this. Surprised a few of my mates, to be honest. Um, and me, and enjoyable. Secondly, just cruising around on the freeway and stuff like that, very, very comfortable. You could ride it all day, 1,000K a day bike. Then, when you want to come through the twisties like where I have been here, so it's really starting to piss down now, um, you can have a lot of fun there too, and then you can just turn off and head bush if you like. Long dirt roads are great. I've done 40k dirt roads, 50k dirt roads. Just sit down, just cruise. If you're going to stand up a lot, you'd need bar risers on it around about an inch. But it's not really a stand up trail riding bike. It's just dirt roads, fire trails, short shifting, and cruising along. Brakes are fabulous. The rear brakes really, really good. Lots of feel and heaps of power. Front brakes quite good too. So if you use the two of them together, it stops very well. It's got luggage. So we've got the panniers. They're so easy to take on and off. They're cheap. They're plastic, but they're, they're fantastic. They come with the bike. They do the job. Heaps of room in them. Great pillion pegs. Multiple options for pillions to grab onto here. Fabulous pillion bike. Fabulous pillion bike. Just needs a bit of preload on the spring. You got your toolkit in here, locks in there. You can put a top box on that giant, fantastic rack there. It's got really tall gearing, so you can sit on 140 all day. Uh, top speed's 150, round about, and at 110, 115 on the freeway, just chugs along nicely. Don't have a huge amount of power, obviously. It's very, very low power, but it's got long, flat torque, a heavy flywheel, and just chugs along all day. Basic switch gear, the clutch is a little bit grabby. It's getting better on this one because the K's are low. Basic standard mirrors, they vibrate a little bit. You know, it's got its vibes, the KLR vibes that it's always had, but they're not too bad, not too bad. Very basic dash. Um, it's just got clock, trip meters, no temperature gauge, and speedo. 
these are your spotties here. There's a USB charger in there, which is under two covers. Where are we? There's a USB charger under two covers in there. And there's a another power adapter here. The screen's adjustable, but you have to take out these bolts and move it up. It's really good high, and but it's fantastic low. I just leave it low and I'm 187 centimeters tall. Basic, basic, basic. <laughs> Hand guards are good. They help with a bit of protection. Here are your spotties over here. I haven't tried them. I haven't tried them at all. Um, they look a bit high though. It's got a radiator guard. It's got fork gator covers. It's got crash bars on it. Here, this is the mo model we get here in Aussie. I mean, it's got everything you need. Plenty of big mud guard protection from the mud. Huge tank, massive bloody tank. Get a million miles out of that. I don't know how many Ks I've done, but I'm only on my second tank, two and a half tanks. Probably 500 Ks, something like that. Hasn't overheated. Nothing's gone wrong with it. Starts perfectly every time. It's just a fantastic bike. A really good option for anyone who wants a budget, low priced, all rounder that you can go touring on, have fun in the twisties, go trail riding, and then you can update it, and make it your own. Like if I owned this, I'd put a pipe on it, a full system, if I could get one, an air filter, and I would try and get it remapped if it's possible, if any of the piggyback systems fit on this. Um, I'd probably put a better bash plate. The bash plate's, you know, it's just a low rent bash plate. Uh, it's plastic, you just smash as soon as you hit it on something. And I noticed the sump plug sticks out anyway, a bit under it. So you put a bash plate, a muffler or a full system, m maybe an air filter and then see how it goes. If it had another five horsepower, it'd be wicked. And that's about all I'd do to it. Um, look at that seat, honestly. You can sit back here or you can sit here. It's comfortable. I haven't moved the handlebars at all. I might put one inch risers on it if it was mine. Two inches if I was gonna stand up and ride a lot. But yeah, look, the mighty KLR, no wonder Kawasaki still make it. And everyone I know that has one loves it. It's just one of those bikes that everyone should experience and enjoy once in their lives. Because it's definitely putting a smile on my face, even on this rainy Sunday morning. Anyway, guys, I'm going to head off and get a coffee somewhere. I am in the middle of nowhere, by the way. But um, I can find somewhere to get coffee. I had a petrol station sausage roll and coffee for breakfast and it just didn't hit the spot the coffee but uh anyway guys thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to our channel let us know about your klr experience and uh you have a fantastic day see you later bye